Okay, everybody, thanks for joining today. Uh, today we have Chen Gear Lee on the Hone It podcast. Uh, Chen Gear is a TA professional currently at Caseware, but I know you and I have had some really great conversations about how to how to evolve, what the profession where the profession is going. You know how how you differentiate differentiate your 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 techniques your techniques and tactics with with talent at Caseware. So um, yeah, I guess if you could introduce yourself, Chen Gear. Let everybody know kind of how you got into recruitment. I know a lot of people kind of fall into this business, but would love to hear your story and maybe what you're up to at Caseware. Absolutely. Hi, Nick, and hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, my name is Chengir. I was like, I'm like many other people who fall into this profession. I did, I did fall into it in a very mysterious and unorthodox way. Uh, but yeah, but by training, I'm a, I'm a researcher. I spent 10 years in academia, chemistry, chemical engineering, material science. So that's probably, you can guess, uh, all, all sorts of research skills that are transferable into recruitment. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't know if I qualify as a newcomer anymore, but so we arrived in October 2019. Uh, before that, uh, in, so I'm in Toronto in Canada, but before that, I lived for six years in South Korea. Uh, had my startup there, so that was a lot of fun as well. But uh, my first role in Canada was a job developer. So basically, that's the person who is serving as a bridge between the company and the candidates. It's sort of like recruitment, but on the candidate side. And um, yeah, helped people find jobs. And then, um, yeah, marketing, sales, and recruitment obviously were, were a natural progression from there. And I was on the hunt for a little bit. And I've met Martin Hawk. Not sure if you've met him, but definitely follow. He's uh, the leader of the People People's Group. That's like the largest Slack community for HR and talent professionals in North America and expanding internationally. Uh, but yeah, uh, just was blessed with this opportunity. And uh, it's been two and a half years it's, uh, at Caseware, and it's been a wild ride. Martin's fantastic. So he he saw something in you, all right, and, and kind of gave you the chance. Is that right? In terms of... That was a very interesting story, right? Because like, even yeah. though uh, I was like after job development, right? I was, uh, I think that was a big lesson in humility because I thought, okay, I know all the tactics. I know how to job hunt. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was winter. As you know, Canada goes into hibernation <laughs> as probably maybe like most of North America. Uh, and uh, yeah, it took me actually three months, 111 days. But what I did, wow. I think, right at that time, I was still shipping content. I, I like totally robotically and blindly. I'm just going to create stuff and put it out there. And uh, I know that some weird perception could have been like, hey, this guy is jobless. Like why he's teaching us about how to find jobs. But it's interestingly, that's precisely was the thing that made Martin pick up the phone mm -hmm. and call me, right? So he was reading at first when he saw my profile, he's like, who is this like arrogant, asshole like with his this kind of face like very smug face but yeah. as he was reading my content it's like it's interesting i have this cognitive dissonance where i read stuff and there's actual substance so this kind of conflict internally eventually resulted in him picking up the phone and he just called me out of the blue uh i thought like he wants to network so normally i would be prepared like you know dressed up groomed up with my with my resumes prepared but he just called me i'm in my home t-shirt my hair is messy and he's also covid style he has a beard like this you know yeah. so that, and then like 20 25 minutes into the conversation i'm like are you are you interviewing me are you offering me it's like yeah you know i have a role I'm, i need a recruiter and uh yeah i said like sorry i'm um i'm sitting on three offers and i don't want to give you like set false expectations give you false promises right he's like, yeah yeah fine cool dude it's all good and then he just texts me in the evening hey i don't want to i don't want you to come back to me next week saying that you've accepted like let me arrange some calls for you and it was like wednesday thursday friday three calls and by friday evening i had an offer and uh, it just was a no-brainer it was the company that truly made me feel that they wanted me and uh, i never looked back we always like to say that that interview experience is what is a peek behind the curtain of what it's like to actually get stuff done within an organization. And just him simply being able to kind of turn that around quickly, get you on the calendar the next two, three days, I think speaks volumes of how, how a business operates. So fantastic. Um, what did, now, I know, I know you're still posting a lot of great content. I was looking at some of your YouTube videos and posts and such before this. And you, you give a lot of wisdom to job seekers still. So I, I can see where your background is in that helping people find jobs versus as many people, you know, in the recruitment world, it's helping clients find people, right? It's a different direction. So have you looked at some of your posts from the past when you were in job seeking mode and creating a great content and having that kind of unique view? Are you looking at some of that to guide your current content about how helping recruiters think about the candidate experience and, 
and and stand out in their messaging to attract the right candidates? I think my overall ethos is to is to find people to help people find purpose, right? And and that uh, obviously we spend like one third of our life working. That's that's a lot of time. And on a, everyone is familiar with pyramid of Maslow, right? The this very top of the triangle, the uh, self actualization or life purpose or a mission. All these concepts they they're not gonna be they're not gonna attract too much of your attention if the foundation of the pyramid is not filled. If you don't have a job, you don't have money to um, uh, to cover for you know food and essentials, right, and shelter. And uh, I think that's where job hunting education comes in, right? Really, I want to feel this blast first. So a lot of my content is targeting like, okay, let's get your job first. Let's get you rich first. And once you are rich, once you have money, once you've closed all these levels of the pyramids, you're going to start asking real questions, the deeper questions. Mm. Who am I? What is my place here? What is this life for? What is the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? And how do I define it for myself? So it is uh, It is just uh, like job hunting, career, talent acquisition, recruitment, it's important, but it's just a little tiny aspect from the whole spectrum of uh, what your identity as a human and your path of a human must be here. That's fascinating because I think what I'm taking from what you're saying there a little bit is that it almost takes you a job or two, to your point, to kind of get that security or get that foundation before you can start thinking about what do you really want to do? Is that fair? Right? In terms of what about recent grads and things like that? Is it is it too soon for those people to be able to have those tough conversations with themselves to think about what's right for them in a career maybe before they have those needs met and a paycheck that might be consistent? Or do you think it's possible for folks super early in their career to be able to have those? Not at all. I I think like, I would say like on the opposite side, right? People who are younger, they, they, it's a, it's a new, new energy. They, they operate at a different level of consciousness. The only problem that they're battling is the noise, right? They, they were, we sort of adjusted to the noise. We were born in the era with no cell phones. Right. And we sort of seen all this evolution. But right now they are thrown into this and they brainwashed from the very beginning, right? From mm. being a being a toddler, being a newborn. You already have a cell phone and parents don't want to spend time with you, but like you're eating your cereal, you're salivating over a screen. Right. So that's the problem. And that's um that is a counter force to your self-awareness and self-awareness is something that will help you to create your reality and manifest all the things that you want. Uh, with elder folks is the opposite. Life experience becomes that interference. They've uh, collected so much conditioning throughout their life. This is, uh, is already, again, it's a different level of brainwashing. Your parents brainwashed, your society brainwashed, your school brainwashed you, right? And all this informational garbage that you absorb every day is brainwashing you. If you don't get rid of it, right, you you don't you don't really taste what the true freedom is. So my my angle to everything will be through the, the lens of spiritual intelligence, and we can talk more about that. But I feel like you have a question. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I let's let's dig deeper in that. How how do you balance that kind of philosophical or spiritual journey spir- spiritual journey with that of a a research background, an academic, right? I'd, I'd love to kind of hear how you're blending the two and maybe using those research techniques to to get deeper and find yourself, mm-hmm. uncover uh, uncover true meaning. That's again, that comes down to uh, self-identification, right? Uh, my, my job does not re- define me. Yeah, recruitment is what I do, but I'm not a recruiter. Talent acquisition is what I do, but it's, I'm not a talent partner, right? Coaching is what I do, but I'm not fully a coach. Right. And I was a job developer, but um, I mean, uh, uh, it was job development. But these are these kind of things that I'm talking about uh, conditioning and people who identify themselves with their jobs. You see what's happening. They've been 20, 20 years on the roll and then they lose the job and they lose the very foundation. And why? Because the foundation is standing on the on the quicksand on the shift. They're standing on the shifting sands. Right. You cannot build your foundation on something that is transient, something that can be easily changed. Right. And uh, that's exactly what's happening. Right. You cannot, and if you don't know who you are deeply and you're not grounded in that knowledge, again, speaking of spiritual intelligence, you're, you're dancing on a the quicksand. There is nothing, uh, there's no stability, there's no full understanding of life in you. 
I've heard from folks who go through or kind of going through the retirement process, right? Kind of ending their work journey and trying to then focus on that next chapter, you know, they struggle with that, right? In terms of the job had been their identity for years. And now at that point, trying to find kind of new meaning, new hobbies, having time to do these things that maybe they hadn't taken the time to think through or focus on in the past. I, I do love, love that you're encouraging younger folks to, to, to ask those difficult questions to themselves because, you know, education institutions don't necessarily prompt that, you know, uh, college doesn't necessarily frame it that way. Right. So that's, that's, that's a journey that people need to find on their own. So I, I think you're right about focusing on that early. I was just curious if, you know, the hierarchy would require someone to have a little bit of experience before they think about or figure out what skills they have that are marketable. A lot of the content that you you publish that I think is very correct is, you know, when you go out to network or, or, you know, try to find a new job or do a career change, you don't just go talk to people. They're going to ask what's in it for them. And you need to be able to have answers and be able to articulate what your value is. Right. And so part of me wonders, you know, until you have that first or second job or figure out what you're good at or what you like, it might be more difficult to answer that question for yourself. But, you know, that that frame of reference is, is probably very healthy and positive, you know, earlier and mm -hmm. earlier. I think like for younger people, it would be a sort of a different conversation because um, it's it's sometimes not about just coaching, right? Like you can you can drive the conversation through mentorship and through teaching. Uh, the vessel is empty. There are some things that uh, yeah, there are some always already there are, there are some programs that are running with error, but there is a lot of empty space where you can just write the new program and they will absorb it and they will integrate it and they will be very very efficient because I understand okay these things are working, right? But if um, I can probably take you deeper into philosophy and that will explain a lot about talent acquisition as well. But let's say uh, just a very, like what I always, and this is what I do with my coaches, right? Like I ask them, let, let me take you to the very deep depths of your direct experience. So let's say, let me take you to, to the, to your direct experience. If you, if you talk about your, how we learn about reality, right? We learn it about our five senses. So like it's the first sense, your eyes, right? Let me ask you a question. The reality of a person who was born blind and your reality, do you experience the same thing? Hmm. I would say no. Obviously not, right? Because right. Uh, you, you, you have a sense of sight and they don't, right? So the reality is different already. But where is the act and where is the process of seeing taking place? Is it in your eyes? Is it the, the light being decoded in these little cells in your eyeball? Or where is it where is it actually taking place? The act of seeing. The act of seeing is probably deeper in the realization of translating what you see into a feeling or a emotion or reaction to something like that. And whether that's sight or sound or Correct. light waves, you know, yeah. Uh, which is uh, like, the, where's the realization happening? The realization happening within the mind, correct? Fair, yes. And then uh, let's look at another sense, right? Your ears in the sense of hearing, like what do you actually hear? You're like miles and miles away. I'm speaking to the microphone. You're listening to earphones. Do you actually hear the waves traveling through the air or where the actual act and the process of hearing taking place? Between where are the two, words between my two ears <laughs> the words where, where the words are taken where the words make sense right so again another sense it's taking place in the minds how about the sense of taste how about the sense of touch how about the sense of smell where is everything taking place in your mind in in your your brain in your mind in your so now let now now let me yeah. now let me ask you a question. Like, have you ever experienced anything but your own mind? No, I don't think so. So, so that's a unique, we and that's that's a and unique that's, environment. Yeah, you you are you are sitting in the dark room, and that dark room is your cranium, and that's and and everything is happening there. You've never experienced anything but your own mind. You will never experience anything but your own mind, and this is truth for eight billion 
people out there. Now, what is the main illusion that traps everyone? Is the deep belief that you are the mind. And until, and again, it's it's probably a longer conversation than 30 minutes, but that's the question that I want. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, and Nick, to you as well, I want to just evoke this and provoke that deeper meditation. Are you the mind? Because that investigation will take you down the rabbit, rabbit hole. And then everything else, all the other questions, they will become, most of them will become irrelevant because you will start seeing through the illusion. And the main illusion is that that persona, that per person is manufactured by the mind. The person that you believe yourself to be is the product of the mind. And most people, they, they will never get there and they never really ask these kind of questions themselves. What is reality? What is experience? Who am I? right and yeah i i think i mean for my generation i know we're probably a little different in age but you know i think for my generation it was at a time in my life when the matrix came out when everybody kind of had that that was a visual representation of what we're talking about here which was so terrifying and eye-opening and you walk out of that going where are we what are we doing right that was the the emotional reaction I had to that movie when, you know, start to basically ask the questions and go down the rabbit hole. Right. So I, I, I love what you're saying. I don't know what that is for. I'm sure other generations had that. Um, you know, I, I've been living in Costa Rica where ayahuasca is a huge thing yeah. now. It used to be kind of an under kind of an unspoken thing or a very quiet thing, but now it's like almost a tourist thing where people come down to do ayahuasca to kind of dig deep and, go into themselves and and come out better on the other end right and these kind of transformative experiences so um I, I don't want to advertise like psychedelic experiences yeah, here no, but just, this is, but but yeah. this is something that uh, exactly shows like how you poke a hole in in the mind and it shows that uh, there's nothing there but uh i love the i love matrix movie but most people like everyone watched it no one no one really understood what it is about yeah no it's very the, philosophical and very it, it's very interesting, very complex. I don't, I don't know if the second and third, and I mean, like it's complicated wanna, tying it all together. But if you just even limit it to the first one and just that basic premise that you know it was just in the mind, and you know the, you know the, the reality around us is not necessarily real, or it's in your own mind, not, not outside of your body. So. Um, we got okay, again. The, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we we got, we gotta keep moving, but I want to tie it. Uh, I want to tie it to the topic that you have, right? Like we talk about hiring, recruitment, talent acquisition, uh, but uh, that's precisely what we're doing, right? When you say generation, generation is generalization, right? If your age is a biological age, but your spiritual maturity, the maturity of the mind within the body, is can be different. And you you know it from your life experience. You speak with 60 years old who like behave like 18s. And you speak with 18s who are extremely mature for their age, just because there is a depth of understanding, right? Same thing with talent. When I hire, it doesn't matter doesn't matter what you look like, what's your background, what's your culture. What I'm look what I'm hiring is the mind. And what I'm looking for when you speak for talent is exactly how the mind operates. What is this person believes himself to be? That's what the mind is. And what I'm looking also for is the interference. Because what is the major interference to performance? You, 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 you are your own enemy. The things that you believe are your own limitations. So this interference that I'm looking for, the major interference at work is the strong, is exactly the strong mind, strong ego. The, the belief that you are something else. And then you have a lot of experience with that as well at the workplace, right? When people come in and uh, their their ego is so inflated, they cannot work with other people. That's the interference of the mind. There is a set of beliefs. There is a set of ideas and thoughts that are so deeply integrated. They're so deeply programmed that they interfere with uh, with the work and collaboration and like building uh, building the dream that we all want to build right I and mean, i think that's where some of the more modern companies and and sounds like research shows productivity may have not been improved by it but this idea of 
taking down the walls of cubicles and things like that, removing kind of the corner offices and the hierarchies and some of that stuff, more flat organizational structures, right? Some of that is literally breaking down some of those walls and some of those perceptions in terms of seniority, right? Leveling titles, all of that stuff that used to be very hierarchical, right? And the ladder was very, very clear. The ladder is not so clear now for most companies. Mm -hmm. Um, Lateral moves, lattices, people are starting to talk about the career journey in many different ways than what historically took place with some of these walls that that you're, you're talking about. So it's interesting. Now we're starting to see that open offices and no time to kind of focus or actually have quiet atten- attended time, right, is is almost derailing in some types of companies in, in, in exchange for collaboration. But it, would you say that's similar to what you're thinking? Companies are starting, some companies are starting to recognize that, you know, titles and where you sit, you know, might actually have a negative impact on for for me it's just a common sense right every person this i think like uh, i don't remember quite the book but it's written by an astronaut like i think he's canadian but he said like everyone needs to have this experience in life to go up there in the rocket ship and look at the earth and you will understand there are no boundaries there are no lines between countries all these notional walls and boundaries they created by humans there are no countries there are no there's no separation there's no difference right so building office as cubicles and building these notional walls between people is just against our nature this is not what we are and modern companies they have modern leaders who are, who have higher level of consciousness and they have deeper understanding of these things right so we are we are one tribe we are one people and we, we have always been we just got to getting closer to finally realization and and to to your question that's probably um my mission is to be that catalyst right because uh, for me that's the that's the game that i like to play we see that i mean we see that even within our own industry the the ecosystem that is recruitment and talent acquisition and various roles in this industry right you got external recruiters you have internal talent acquisition partners there's people that have never been on both sides of that and have very strong opinions about them versus the others, right? I think that's always interesting. Um, I, I've worked externally as a recruiter. I've worked in vendor management companies to kind of play the middle middle person. I've worked yeah. in-house in big companies and I've worked in-house at small companies and I've been a consultant and things like that. So I, I look at our industry from, from all these different viewpoints and, and see a lot of what we do is very similar, even though you know external recruiters or executive recruiters might have a very strong opinion on what they do and how they operate versus maybe internal talent acquisition teams. So um, what do you think about that just in terms of kind of pitting this back to what what we do in the various roles? I, I think the follow-up to that question, Jengir, would be how are you seeing this market change, right? I'm seeing a lot of recruiters out of work. Do you think the future of recruitment is some sort of hybrid or embedded or RPO situation versus kind of external internal like we've seen curious to see how your thoughts on breaking these barriers applies to maybe the 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 industry you know that is talent acquisition the again my vision is very biased and very narrow i'm an internal talent i've never been never worked externally right and uh, uh also again i'm limited in experience but um in terms of future like we don't know right it's it's hard it's hard to tell i can only tell that what makes me efficient as internal right that's exactly what's lacking in external partner right the this institutional knowledge and i think if if it's your if you're an external partner and you you're looking uh i want to be careful with the words that i'm choosing because you can i cannot prescribe anyway i cannot say like you should do this and you will get this because this is not how it works uh it's either in you or it's not in you right this these questions that we discussed today you some of you like we're gonna listen and gonna say you know this is, sounds interesting oh i will look into it one day and some people will get hooked and they will say i will dig into this until i find the answer until i find what is that truth this guy is talking about and the same thing with the external internal you, there is this invisible wall and differentiation, but if you start a conversation right there, if you start a conversation, hey, we all humans, I want you to succeed no matter what, right? Doesn't we, We're going to have a different quality conversation. That comes to the candidate experience as well. I call my candidates on the first call. I tell them right away. It doesn't matter for me. 
like with case or not with case or with like i want you to be i want you to succeed if you if you have multiple offers call me i'm gonna coach you right and if you that's if there's a superior option i'm gonna i'm gonna be the first one to tell you take another option not us choose not us right because i want i don't want you to come here and think like second guessing yourself i want you to come here knowing like that was a hell yes for me right uh it's a little bit of a tangent from your question of where the industry is going <laughs> they uh, i think it's a good answer no it's a, and it was a good point it was a good point because because you're right like if you start the conversation with what are you are you external internal you're just already starting the conversation perhaps on the right foot i i was more curious how some of those perceived labels or stereotypes you know might be changing under our feet right with the moving sands because of the disruption in high tech and the transition and the the demand and need for skilled labor and, and things like that that we're starting to so see um, more more broadly. What um, you talk about prioritization and I've seen some videos and I think that's great and maybe a little different than the spiritual journey we've been talking about. But mm -hmm. as a recruiter, how do you prioritize? Right? We talk about we're it's a it's a it's an interesting profession. It's a challenging profession. You're you're got people on both sides of you, right? And that that's demanding what do you do to stay organized how do you ensure you're not ghosting folks and getting back to people as you as you you know over promise you know over delivering and under promising right walk me through your kind of day to day absolutely and again i want to be careful to and i want to give a disclaimer to everyone who's listening this is not a prescription what what works for me will not work for you right but uh, and i cannot explain like how to become disciplined discipline is whether whether you seek it you're going to find it and if you are disciplined it's going to manifest everywhere in your life like the guiding principle that i have and i think if you want to install it as a meta program maybe it will work for you but the way you do everything is the way you the way you do anything is the way you do everything all right that's that's my operating principle uh, the way you treat others is the way you work the way you eat is the way you sleep right and and etc uh, etc et um organization and prioritization within the business it's largely a partnership you need to understand your business and you need to understand your partners and you need to understand what's important for them and and help them deliver but then again your ability to get shit done it's a, it's a function of your ability to discern the talent right and that again ties directly to your to your own self mastery if you master your own mind if there is a deep understanding of your own mind you will you can read people just like that because you will understand every mind if you can master yourself you will master the world talent acquisition is simple well like after that the talent talent acquisition is really it's a child's play right if you do this foundational groundwork of uh, true true and deep understanding um and and that's it right and again what what's the number one quality of a top performing recruiter it's a drive there is no way someone can teach you how someone can teach you the drive the only thing and the highest probability of you to become driven is to absorb it by osmosis is just to be in the room with extremely high functioning people and say like i want to be like that how do i be like them and that 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 comes from within it doesn't come through instruction it doesn't come from step by step listicle article it doesn't come from a podcast yeah what what makes you hungry for certain things in life is your particular set of dna and i don't mean genetic dna i mean your very particular composition of mind and spirit i've noticed you you have created though a lot of resources for job seekers that are quite tactical right and and less philosophical um there's i and we can we can point to the links and the comments and 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 the post of this because i think that's super valuable you obviously put a lot of time into sharing tips and best practices and and knowledge that you've accrued into a format that could be shared and learned you know from, from others mm -hmm. um what would you recommend to folks who who are interested in taking that kind of next step if they want to start asking themselves some of the deeper questions to kind of get to the roots of who they are, where their strengths are, where they should start looking, you know, for some of those answers. I mean, are you have any books? If they don't, if it's not just self intrinsic that they already have it, do you have any tips on where someone could could go, a book they could read to to start to begin that journey? 
nothing i don't do advice okay. i don't do recommendation like if you again if it, if that's in you you'll get there you'll you'll arrive there yourself the only thing that i would probably mention and again i want to be careful here because the person who is ready they will absorb and they will understand regardless right but if you're looking for a true teacher look up kapil gupta k a p i l gupta g u p t a there are very few people who have true understanding in this life he's one of them and he is way way ahead of the game right if you truly seeking to understand study the work of this man right but then again when i say study people who will think that it's a prescription they will read this stuff they will study they will listen they will not understand right true understanding requires true seriousness like if you want to get it you will get it regardless i think that's a wonderful place to end this chengir i <laughs> you've you've dropped a lot of knowledge a lot of you know self interlooking at, at even just you know myself thinking about these questions you know during the podcast but i i appreciate the time i think i think that is a, a good time for our industry in terms of a little bit of a reflection it's been a it's been a couple crazy years right in the in the world of 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 business and companies and the way work and to your point work is 70% of our waking life so you know hard to ignore it you know even if we are you know going through this spiritual journey to go to dig deeper but um yeah, I think it's a great reminder today that that a job is a job, right? And a career is a career, but it's not who you are. So Chen Gear Lee, Mike Drop, thank you for joining the Honit Podcast. And and again, it's been it's always great to chat with you. Thank you for having me.